my message has changed. So I want to forewarn you. Um, and it, Now, I never thought I would ever do that, to be quite frank with you. Um, I've heard preachers say that before, and I've always thought, well, and this was ungracious of me. Um, so, well, if the Lord can talk to you during the week, why couldn't he have forewarned you of what it was you were going to be dealing with? <laughs> so, mea culpa. Turn with me, if you would, please, to Matthew chapter 16. Yes. Starting in verse 13. Matthew chapter 16, starting in verse 13. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he was asking his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, and others Elijah, but still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ the Son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. I also say to you that you are, the, are Peter, or Petros, and upon this rock, Petra, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever ever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The word there, well, first off, let me see. What, did, what Dave did was he was authentic with you. He was authentic. It's Rick's fault. <laughs> Never insult the sound man. <laughs> That's not a smart message. All right, is that better? Okay. What? <laughs> oh, thank you. I, hopefully, I'm talking. <laughs> What Dave did was he was just being authentic with you. I don't know. I, I, I grew up in a time in the church where authenticity was feared. A man of God to stand in front of you and just to be authentic and saying, look, I got an issue. You might as well ask them to fly because you'd have a better chance of that than, than them being open and honest with you. There was this thing that... They had to have a veneer of perfection because you, you, they were up here and you were looking at them and, and what they did impacted you. And I mean, that, that, is a, that is quite a thing to carry, knowing that people are looking to you and what you do impacts them. And so a lot of times it's like, well, I've got to hide the dark spots. I've got to, I, I've got to put on the veneer, the mask so that I don't negatively Im impact you, because I love you. It's like in a marriage relationship. If I reveal who I am to my wife, there's the opportunity. She's going to say, I, I didn't sign up for that. I That's ugly, and I want no part of that. There's that opportunity of being rejected. And trust me, there's plenty of ugly standing up right here in front of you. <laughs> yeah, but ugly, <laughs> ugly. But if you th if you looked in here, you know, it's not all puppies and roses and candy cane. It's you know, it, it's struggle. It's but the thing, yeah, exactly. It's life. It's I've been beaten down some. I've got my own issues that I carry with me. You know, you don't get through this life unscarred. 
Things happen. Bad things happen. But Jesus says, yeah, you are Peter. You are Simon Peter. You are the stone. You're going to have an impact. But it's on this rock, this boulder that I'm going to build my kingdom and that gates of hell will not prevail against it. Gates are not offensive weapons. It's a defensive weapon. The gates of hell are going to be crashed in. And Jesus says in, in Revelation, he holds the keys of death and Hades. Because the gates of hell could not prevail against him. When he died, he went into heaven and he took the keys of death and hell from the enemy. And he is now the one that holds them. He's the one that's in charge over everything. And there will be a season, and it will only be for a little longer, that the enemy will have sway on this earth. So there's going to be a season where we will bury sons and daughters. There are seasons when men will rape women. There are seasons when the thief will come in and steal, whether it's your identity, your personhood. It is for a season, and a season alone. But there's going to come a day when the trumpet will sound, and all of this will be set right. So I know that I have... I'm going to blow you up a little bit, Marta, in a good way. Uh, yes, last week after this sermon, I, I have a cold. Forgive me. That's why I sound like I do. It's, I'm not trying. It's not an affectation. I'm not trying to impress you. Um, Lord knows that's never going to happen. But I was out uh, just shutting off something, getting you know the the church set up, and Marta goes like, "Hmm." I was kind of I don't know the term you use is like a bummer or a downer or something. The message that I had is like. And I took note of that. I'm like, oh, okay. Debbie Downer, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, don't bring me into it. <laughs> you are not a downer, Debbie. <laughs> Never. So I, I took note of that. I'm like, okay, all right. You know, so there's, you know, there's the hammer, but there's the carrot. So I think I got to bring the, hopefully a carrot. And then Dave shared with himself, like, oh, no, I need to bring more than just a carrot. I, I need to. So I was like, Lord, what, do you, what would you have for me to say? <clears throat> so if you would turn with me to 2 Corinthians. Chapter 4, verses 8 through 18. In whose case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving so that they might not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus is Lord. In ourselves as your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, light shall shine out of darkness, is the one who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, so that the surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not from ourselves. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not despairing, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body the dying of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifest in our body. In this world, we will have troubles. 
And I think God is calling us just to be authentic and saying, look, I'm going through a hard time. Because if you want to be healthy, you got to be honest with the situation you're dealing with. you got to look at it, and you got to mourn over it. And sometimes it's going to tick you right the heck off. And you're going to get angry. And all of those things are legit because they're emotions. You don't control your emotions. Your emotions just are. They reveal something in that's deeper. They're revealing, really, who you are or what you've been through. So God never says, you know, unemotional is the best way to go. He just says, don't let your emotions control you. Be angry, but sin not. Don't let your emotions be an excuse to do something stupid. He doesn't say don't feel your emotions. So you look at the situation and you cry. Or you get angry. Or you swear. Not that I ever do that. Or you say, why? Yeah, you have regret. Why did I do this? What could have I done differently? Why did they do it? You ask these questions, and that's fine. But you don't stop there. Because when you're in that position, you're in vulnerability. You, you, you're stripped down. And it can be easy to get bogged down in that and not move forward. But you're given a choice. You can scoop up what remains, and you can go, Father. And this is where the important part lies. It's where is your trust? It's not in my understanding of the circumstances. I'm one person from one perspective. I don't understand everything. I can barely control myself if that. There's no way I'm going to control the circumstances. But I can pick it up, and I can go to the Redeemer. And say, Jesus, what are you going to do with this? Because you are a redeemer. It's who you are. It's not just a name. It's what you do. Lord, here, redeem this. Make it so that I'm glad this happened. And you know what? He, just, he can do that. He does it. He's done it in my life. He's taken something that I had no control over and he's used it to keep me in a cage for decades and he redeems it. And it no longer has power over me. It is what it is. I, did, I can't change it. But God, you can use it. So use it. The time for authenticity is today. If you're wounded, it's okay. Don't cover it up. Give us an opportunity to come around you and say, Lord, let's go before the throne of the mighty God who knows all, who can do anything if he puts his mind to it. And if there's an enemy here that needs to be bound, let's bind it. And if there's a blessing we need to loose, let's loose it. So that he can be given the glory. So that people can see that there's life in him. I don't know if you've ever heard of this gentleman, but there's a, a bishop of the, um, of the uh, Assyrian Orthodox Church his, whose name is Mar Mari Emmanuel. He's a bishop in, uh, I think it's Christ the Good Shepherd Church in Sydney, Australia. If you've ever seen him or listened to him, there is something that your soul will just resonate with this guy. You know, you think of the, you, you have a, a tuning fork uh, of a certain frequency, and you take another tuning fork from secret, you ring one, and it's in a box, and the vibrations will cause this one to, there's something about, I have a tuning fork in me, the Holy Spirit. 
And when I see someone else who has the Holy Spirit manifesting that, speaking truth, it resonates here. And I can feel it, and I know truth. I can sense truth. And this man is unreal because he's legit and he's authentic. A couple weeks ago, he was attacked by a young man in the middle of one of his services. It was televised. Guy came up with him with a knife. Now, if you don't know uh, Bishop Marmari Emmanuel, I, I encourage you to look him up because he, he's he, he is he's very good. It's like, you'll watch him on YouTube. It's like going to church, and he he is about loving people regardless. But he's not about he, he's also about being truthful. And you can do both. You can be tr- say the truth, but you can say it in a loving way. And he does that. And this guy, he was attacked by this young man, and he's lost, he lost an eye. But it was, apparently there was a malfunction of the knife that he, the guy used to attack him with, that it was, the blade was supposed to come out of the handle, and it didn't. And then he ended up like cutting off like several of his own fingers in the attack. So God kept this man. Yes, there, was there an impact? Yes, and there always will be that impact. But the message he gave is like, son, you are now my son, and I will pray for you every day, and I want you to come to know the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And he says, I love you. I will always love you. I mean, it was just, you see that, you see love in action. You see authenticity. That's what the world needs. The world doesn't need us to have on a mask and say, I I am something that I'm not. They need someone to say, look, this is who I am. And you know what? Christ died for me. And his spirit is in me. And I'm being transformed into his image. And there's going to come a day where this imperfect will be cast off and I, it will be replaced with perfection. This corruptible will be cast off, and I will put on incorruptibility. That's our future. But let us be honest and open with those around us. And let's love them to the best that we can, so that if they do attack us with a knife, we can say, you are my brother or sister for life. And I will always pray for you. And I will always love you. Because that's who we serve. We serve the one who went on the cross. Who gave it all. So that you and I could be sons and daughters of the Most High God. That we could be brothers and sisters in Christ. We have a glorious glorious future ahead of us and we are walking on this earth still and there's imperfection and there's pain and suffering and it's okay it's okay to feel your feelings we serve a good God we serve a powerful God let us never lose sight of that Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we acknowledge who you are. Lord, there is none like you. There is none beside you, none before you. You are over all things. You created all things. You hold all things together. You are the one that unfurled the scroll of the universe. And there will come a day where you will refurl that scroll. Our hope is in you, O oh God. Lord, we want you here to be the head of this body. Lord, we want to just simply do your will.
Lord, where we are ignorant, God, we ask that you give us knowledge. Where we are foolish, Father, that you would give us wisdom. Father, where we hurt, that you will bring healing. And that where we are strong, Father, that we would go forth in that strength. Lord, we know that we've, in the past, have messed up. We don't hide those facts, Father. There's nothing that can be hidden from you. But Lord, our desire is not to do that. Lord, our desire is to speak truth and to speak it in love. Help us, Father, to do that. Forgive us our sins, Father. We hate our sin. It separates us from you, and it separates us from one another. Thank you, God, that you are faithful to forgive our sins when we humbly request that. And when we repent, We give you all praise and glory. And we pray this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen.